Welcome back to the channel. This will be video three in our Python tutorial series. So if you missed the first ones on installing and setting up Python and PyCharm and initial introductions to variable types, go ahead and check those out. You'll probably want that info. Um, but if you're already at that point, uh, then let's get right into it. The goal of this video will be uh, gathering input from users in your programs as well as modifying integers and strings within a program and actually using them to do a few different cool operations. So this is the code we started with and it's pretty plain code from the last video. Uh, we have three variables, clothing, age, and whether or not they're elderly and the setting of those variables determines what gets output. So we can see when we run this, it just tells us what the variables are initially set to and then they get changed inside the code. And then we set the variables again. But let's say we don't want to just hard code the variables. We actually want the user to determine what gets put in. So we're actually going to do all you have to do to prompt a user for feedback inside of Python for input is you use the input function. And you'll see when we run this that uh, this is actually going to prompt them to enter data and inside of the input is the actual prompt that they're going to see. So if we say the clothing variable is now going to be equal to an input of enter an article of clothing. And now if we run this, we're going to have enter an article of clothing and let's say shoes. I don't know if that counts, but when you hit enter, it runs the rest of the code. So now you can see right away, there was a man wearing shoes, he was 63, and was he old? So we're gonna do this for all three of the variables because you can have inputs in any format. So you can say input, enter, age. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I actually made a mistake there that actually is good to talk about. In Python, you can use a single quotation or a double quotation, just an apostrophe. This is the same to Python. You can use either single or double quotations for string values and they work the same way. And then elderly, we will say input elderly and we'll tell them, we'll tell them that it's going to be a true false inside of the prompt so that they know to enter true or false. Okay, and as long as there's no errors here, when we run this, we'll see our first prompt, which is the initial values, and then we're gonna enter an article of clothing. So we're kind of making like a Mad Libs type game with this, so article of clothing, We'll just say shirt, enter age, he's 24. And is he elderly? No. And right away, you can see there was a man wearing a shirt, he was 24, and was he old? No. So this is kind of cool. Right away, you can see we're prompting users to enter data inside of our function, and we immediately use that data to display something in the code. So. One extra thing I'd like to talk about real quick is a few individual properties of strings and numbers. So when we enter an article of clothing, we could say rather than there was a man wearing a whatever, we can say your clothing item starts with, and we're actually going to reference one piece of the string that we made here. So a cool thing about strings is every individual letter and character inside of a string has what's called an index. And you can call that by using square brackets and defining what index number you want to use. So here you'll see when I say index zero and we say article of clothing hat age 24, sure he's old, then what you're gonna see, unless I've, your clothing item starts with H right there. So one thing to note about what we just did 
we started from zero. Most people who are unfamiliar with code and programming would think you would start from one and the first character in a string would actually be one. But to the code, the first item in something is zero. So if you want to reference the H at the beginning of hat, that's zero. If we had made that a one, we would have gotten an A. And if we had made that a two, we would have gotten a T. So it's important to know the length of a string is actually technically the number of characters inside of it minus one because you always start counting from zero. So one thing we can do with the number, that's just a kind of cool quick introduction to indexes on strings, but one thing we can do with the number is we can, rather than turning it into a string, we could add it to something and we can say, so we will say in 10 years you will be, and what we're going to do here is we're actually going to perform math. We are going to say 10 plus the age entered, and we're doing it all inside of a string function so it'll still display with our prompt. But what you actually see is inside this set of brackets, we're doing 10 plus age. So whatever age we enter when we run this, again, we'll say hat, and we will say 24, and we will say we are not old. Oh, what have I done? Okay, one thing I forgot to enter was when you need a variable and you haven't defined what data type it's going to be, but you need it to be a specific type, you need to add this condition to your variable statement. So I was just calling for an input, and by default, when we call the user to enter something, that's going to come in as a string. What I've added is the int function, which will convert the input to an integer. And so now we can see when we run this, enter article of clothing, let's do a suit this time, Enter age, let's say 33. And is this elderly? Yeah. So your clothing item starts with S. We already covered that's still true, but now in 10 years you will be 43. So what's kind of cool, you're, we're already asking the user for input, we're manipulating that data, and we're returning something different than what they just put, put in. Previously, we were just taking the information we were giving and we were displaying it to show why you might need variables. But now we're starting to do something. And this is gonna come in handy for our next video when we go ahead and build a simple calculator. So as always, thank you for watching. And uh, if you found this useful, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, bye.